happy. I'm expectant of it. Thank you, Jesus. Praise God. Give thanks to the Lord. Aren't you thankful for a forever faithful God this morning? Can we give him some praise while we're here? Lord, we love you, Jesus. You've been so faithful. You are forever faithful, and we acknowledge you for that. Well, God bless you. Thank you so much for being at the Pentecostal Church this morning. We are so thankful that you are here with us. Just a reminder for you, Wednesday, December 21st at 6.30 p.m., we're going to be having our Christmas dinner at the Rothwell Lodge over at the park. And so it's always a wonderful time. Please be a part of that. Bring some side dishes while you're at it. Bring your big pots out. Bring a dessert. The church will provide the meats and the drinks. But please, if you would like to contribute and to participate in that gathering, please do so. Everyone would love to enjoy your good cooking and uh, have you be a part of that. And over in the cafe area, we have a lot of free items available for you. There is some cough syrup over there, some children's coconut mint cough syrup. There's lotions. I think I've seen a few pairs of socks, brand new. Uh, they have been donated to us. And uh, we have boxes literally of those, so please take some home with you if you need a little stocking stuffer or something and you were wondering what to get someone there's uh, items available for you to do so and today we want to go take an offering our offering this morning is for our compassion ministry fund we want to be compassionate we want to show love in the community and we want to be the hands and feet of Jesus working as the body of Christ should. Amen? Amen? Let's pray over this offering as we give. Lord Jesus, we're so thankful that you've been so compassionate upon us. We're so thankful for your mercy and your grace. Lord, we ask you to bless this offering this morning. We ask you to do a mighty work in it. Let it supply every need that it needs to be met. We give you all the glory and the praise and the honor in Jesus' name. God bless you as you give.
chains shall he break for the slave is our brother and in his name all oppression shall cease sweet hymns of hope in grateful chorus raise we let all within us praise his holy name All right, we have a video that we want to share with you. This is going over North American Missions offering. This is specifically talking about the Christmas for Christ offering that we will be taking on Christmas Day. Let's take a look. Greetings, my name is Chris Liu. I am the pastor for Tuxic United Pentecostal Church. Uh, the daughter work of Bethel United Pentecostal Church began in approximately May 2018. Um, Tuxa Bay is a village located 113 miles west of Bethel, and the only access to the village is by commercial airlines and uh, through the barge in the summer. There are three surrounding villages that has uh, trails that is to be established for four-wheelers um, to access. And uh, there are many things that we can do for the daughter work, and our goal is to be able to reach each surrounding village to have a preaching point as we go. Um, in uh, July 2021, knowing the limitation of our ability to communicate and reach out to the surrounding villages, we submitted a funding request to um, North American Mission, Alaska Yukon District, uh, to Pastor Jim Blackshire, who's the director, seeking funding in total of $30,000 to purchase a snow machine and a four-wheeler and a storage uh, facility to secure these vehicles. And through the generous uh, approval through um, the Director Jim Blackshear and Christmas for, uh, for Christ program, we were able to uh, secure these funding to purchase a new 2022 snow machine and a four-wheeler. We are grateful for the support that is given unto us throughout the whole district. And we want to utilize these uh, available vehicles to reach out to the surrounding villages. Our goal is to continue our bi-weekly services in Tuxa Bay as weather permits, and to initiate monthly and quarterly contact with known individuals in the surrounding village immediately, and to encourage the surrounding villagers in the Tuxa Conference Ministry 
which we had established since the beginning of COVID, and we want to be able to reach out to people to have Bible study and in every village, even in the village of Shifornik. The people that you saw in this clip, uh, Brother Robert Picker, who is also the tribal administrator for Tuxa Bay, help us secure this stored facility. Uh, we are grateful for that. And thanks again to uh, North American Mission, Alaska Yukon District, uh, particularly to Pastor Jim Blackshear and to Robert Picker and all the people who has been involved, not only in the uh, administration and operation of the church, but providing support and resources. Thank you very much in Jesus' name. A snowmobile might not mean a lot to you, but it can make a world of a difference to those in need in different parts of the country. So giving to Christmas for Christ makes that possible, that they're baptizing in kitchens and they're reaching North America any way that they can. And so we're specifically taking an offering on Christmas Day for that. Of course, you can give any time you would like, um, but specifically we're going to be taking an offering on Christmas Day for that. We want to go to prayer today. Got a number of needs this morning. We want to continue remembering the Dodd family after the loss of precious sister Patty Dodd. We want to continue that the Lord would minister to them and comfort to them during this time. And Andy's dad, he's in the hospital. He's not doing so well this morning. And we want the Lord to touch him. God's more enabled. Julie Morgan has asked us to pray for Laura and Casey who have the flu, and if we can pray for her children as well. Mary Gowski is here. She needs some prayer for vertigo she's been dealing with. We want the Lord to touch her. And Kim and Savannah Dial, they're sick this morning, and they need some prayer. Billy Bennington is in extreme pain in her left stomach, so we want the Lord to do a work in her life today. And there is a man in the prison right at our south campus. He's uh, getting out soon, and he's needing prayer in his family situation. You can imagine just stepping out, and you're almost stepping out into the unknown, not knowing exactly how life's gonna unfold as soon as you step out prison doors. And we want the Lord to minister to him that the Lord can help rebuild his life and get him where he needs to go. And we wanna do that and lift him up. And of course, if you have a need this morning, please come up to the front. If you, if you are sick, you're in pain, and you would like prayer, don't hesitate. We're, we want you to come forward. We want to pray with you, and uh, we want the Lord to do a work in your life. So if you would stand with me this morning, let's take these needs to the Lord and lift them up before him. Lord Jesus, you are so wonderful. You are so gracious. We thank you, Lord Jesus, for being with us this morning. Lord, you are wonderful. You are merciful. Lord, we lift up every single one of these needs here represented. Lord, we lift up the Dodd family this morning, that you would speak peace to their family. You would speak peace to David and the extended family and the close family. You would do a mighty work in the Dodd family's life and saturate them with peace, O oh God, after the loss of Sister Patty Dodd. Lord, we're praying for comfort and we're praying for healing, O oh God, in their hearts and their minds. Lord, you see exactly where Andy is, Andy's dad is right now in the hospital. You see exactly what he needs. We're lifting him up before your throne, asking you to, Lord, do a mighty work in his life, asking you to sh show yourself strong in his situation, oh God. Lord, you see where Laura and Casey are, Lord. You see how they got the flu. We're asking you to do a mighty work in their life. We're asking you to heal their bodies. Lord, we're asking you to take away this sickness in their hearts and their minds and their bodies. We're asking you to do a work in their kids' life as well, oh God. Lord, you see Mary Gowski right where she's at. You see the vertigo she's been dealing with. Lord, we lift her up before you. Lord, we pray that you would do a mighty work in her life. We pray that you would heal her body, Lord, and give her peace today. Lord, help her be able to function properly as she needs to, Lord. We're asking you to give her the strength that she needs, oh God. Lord, you see Kim and Savannah Dial who are sick. 
Lord, we lift them up before you. Lord, we speak peace in their life today. Lord, we speak healing over their lives, Jesus. We ask you to, Lord, comfort them this morning. Lord, erase the sickness in their life. Lord, we lift up Billy Benetton today. Lord, you see exactly what she needs. You see what she's going through. You see the discomfort in her stomach, Lord. You are the author of that body, Lord, and we're asking for a divine healing this morning. We ask you to take your liberty in her life. We ask you for victory in her life this morning, that you would take away all the pain in her this morning. You see this man, Lord, that is about to exit the Mobley Correctional Center, Lord, and how his life is going to unfold. We're asking you to orchestrate his steps, oh God. We pray for his family situation, that you would be in the midst between them. You would work all things out, Lord, for good in his life. We pray, Lord Jesus, that today, and we thank you for it. We worship you, oh God. We thank you for being a God that hears every prayer that we pray. We thank you for, Lord, just hearing us and being with us today. And we acknowledge you for that. Can we give the Lord some praise this morning? Lord, we love you, Jesus. We thank you for being a God that hears our prayers. Lord, every time we call upon your name, a God that answers prayers, we lift you up for that. We worship you, oh God. We love you, Jesus. We love you, Jesus. God bless you. Thank you so much for praying this morning. You may be seated. Let's worship together.
that sometimes when we have a loss and it's due to disease and hardship, you're welcome to have a seat, that it's deflating, it's defeating to our spirits. We've had that happen in the church before. I've had it happen in my life. Yet you know what helps us get through that is that in our spirit, deep, deep down, we cannot stop singing his praises. No matter how deep the loss, Sister McGarvey, Jamie, Scott, even if he doesn't heal here, he heals there. And so we know that Sister Patty Dodd is healed. She's healed in Jesus' name. And we honor that healing today when we praise him. That's why we cannot keep from praising him no matter what may come. Hallelujah. There is an endless song. I'm off key. <laughs> we changed the key on this one, didn't we? Yes. Oh, hallelujah. Just praise him in this song. If you don't know it, you know, you'll get a hold of it. It's pretty easy. Praise God. Can I keep 
what he bounces right back down and his kingdom comes right here that's what we do when we praise him we let his kingdom have full reign here to come and be amongst us in this room for jesus is here in the room here right now here right now making this place Sing along with the saints and the elders in glory, soul, and praise. 
worship him now. Hallelujah. You're worthy to be praised, Jesus. Praise God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. I wonder today, can we just lift our hands one more time? Is he not worthy of all the praise and all the glory and all the adoration and all the honor? Lord Jesus, we honor you, Lord, because of who you are. Lord, you truly are holy. Holy and righteous is the Lord God Almighty who was and is and is to come. There's none like you. There's none beside you. We worship you today, Jesus, and we thank you, Lord, for your sweet presence that is here today. We're so very grateful, Lord, that you showed up. Amen, amen, amen. And I'm also grateful that you showed up, that we are here together in this place today. Thank you for being in church. You may be seated. Thank you for being in the house of God. Our kids can be dismissed at this time if they'd like. Back to kids' church. Look at this, guys. Isn't this great? That's our future right there. And you know how grateful we should be for that because there's a lot of churches right now, they don't have Sunday school because they have no kids. And we are just very fortunate and we're very blessed. I'm very thankful. On behalf of the Dodd family, I want to say thank you. Thank you to this congregation for coming together and loving on them in a time of loss with Sister Patty. And just for those of you that have cooked meals and prepared food and just whatever capacity you have served in these last this last week, thank you for doing that. I don't think we're done. I don't think it's ever done. I think uh, a lot of times when it comes to loss like that, you know, we do our part the week of, and then it's so easy for us to slip back into the role of our routines. But for the family that has lost, then it's, it's nothing's routine. For a long, long time, that routine's been broken. And so we want to just make sure that we keep them in prayer and keep them uh, covered up and, and blessing and love and whatever we can do for them. We just really love the Dodd family. It's good to have John here today again, and good to have Rory and, uh, and Nathan and all the other folks, all you regular folks, it's so good to have you this morning. I want you to do something specific this week. Uh, on Wednesday, our worship team is going to be going to the prison uh, and ministering to the, our, our Kingdom Builders group there that's facilitated by uh, Brother Mike and Sister Julie Morgan. And we just, those guys are looking forward to it. I was there last week, and we just, there was a great presence of the Lord that was there. We had a great group of guys there the, uh, last Wednesday, and of course, you know, we're talking about what's happening this Wednesday, which is our worship team, and they're all pumped and excited. We're going to throw a little bit of Christmas at them, but you know what? Even Christmas music should make you feel the anointing, amen? Because you, it's, it's singing about the same thing that we sing about all year long, and that's the Lord Jesus Christ, and we just want those men to be ministered to. You can imagine being incarcerated during the holidays and what that does to you. Um, those guys are dealing with a lot of stuff. And so we're, we're just very thankful that we're able to do that. And so we're going to do that on Wednesday. So please keep us in prayer. Just ask the Lord's blessing. Ask the Lord's favor. Ask the Lord's spirit to be poured out. Okay? And encourage those men uh, that are there at the DOC. If you have your Bibles, let's join together. And if you would stand with me at the reading of the Word of God. I feel like I have a word for us today. Now, you may not know this, but there are times when your pastor comes up here, and I don't necessarily know if what I got is it. Can I be honest with you? Is this okay? There are days when I'm like, dude, I, my wife can tell you for the last 11 plus years, I may wake up on a Sunday morning after I've done my second round, third round, 15th round, running through my notes. And I walk in the bedroom, I'm like, babe, I don't know. <laughs> and she's like, you know, it's all going to work out. And she was always right. But it's just a reminder that, you know, this is not me. This is the Lord, and the Lord knows what we need. But there's a difference in, in coming up here, and you feel like you're kind of shooting from the hip and just letting God do his thing because you know you ain't got nothing. And, and today, I feel like I do have something specific. 
and I know that the Lord can help us. And he will help us. By the time we leave this place today, it's 1043 right now, and maybe at 1115 if you're lucky. <laughs> we may be at the altar finishing up, but we shall see. <laughs> help us, Lord. Romans chapter 8, verse 16. The Spirit itself beareth witness with our spirit that we are the children of God. And if we're children, then we're heirs, heirs of God and joint heirs with Christ. If so be that we suffer with him, that we may be also glorified together. That means it's going to all happen at the same time. I'm looking forward to being glorified with you, and I hope that you're looking forward to being glorified with me. Cedric, one of these days, we're going to be glorified together, my friend, and it's going to be an amazing thing. Paul goes on right into the Roman church, verse 18. For I reckon that the sufferings of this present time are not worthy to be compared with the glory which shall be revealed in us. In other words, it's going to be worth it all. We cannot even begin to imagine for the earnest expectation of the creature, that's you and me, waiteth for the manifestation of the sons of God, that's heaven and its angels. For the creature was made subject to vanity, not willingly, but by reason of him who has subject the same in hope. Because the creature, that's you and me, itself also shall be delivered from the bondage of corruption. That means your mortal coil, your flesh, your body. Into the glorious liberty of the children of God. For we know that the whole creation groaneth and travaileth in pain together until now. And not only they, but ourselves also, which shall have the first fruits of the Spirit, even we ourselves groan within ourselves, waiting. Everybody say waiting. Waiting for the adoption, to wit the redemption of, of our body. His scripture, along with many others, testifies of how the righteous wait for the adoption of our bodies, where we will be glorified into a new body through the power of the resurrection and the power of the Holy Ghost on that great day when the Lord shall come and return for his church and rapture us out of this place. What a day that will be! What a day that's going to be. This morning I want to talk to you about that day and what we should be doing while we are waiting. Let's put our Bibles down. Let's go to the Lord in prayer before we're seated. Lord Jesus, Lord, for such a time as this, you know why you put on my heart what you put on my heart. And I pray, God, this morning that you would begin to minister to the hearts and minds of every person in this place. Lord, that you would work, Lord, all the way from the back where the Sunday school is, all the way to the front. Lord, that you would begin to minister to us and through us, Lord, and for us. God, touch us, Lord, in our hearts, Lord, where we can be motivated and moved by your spirit. Help us, Lord, to see ourselves in the light and the respect of where you are and your coming that is soon to come. In Jesus' name, amen. God bless you. Thank you for standing. You may be seated. Waiting is something that we all do. Some of us are patient waiters. Others of us, not so much. According to a Timex survey, Americans wait on average 20 minutes a day for, the bu for a bus or maybe a train, if you're in the city, 32 minutes whenever they visit the doctor, 28 minutes in security whenever you're trying to travel, 30 minutes you'll on average spend while waiting for your spouse to get ready. Can I get an amen from all the guys? I believe that statistic is gospel. <laughs> 13 hours a year you will spend waiting for customer service in some shape or form. Yeah. 50 hours each year waiting in traffic. 
The average person spends an hour a day waiting in a line. That's two or three years of your lifetime you'll spend standing in line for something, whether it's your Taco Bell or whatever have you. You're going to spend two or three years of your life just standing in line. Two weeks of your life will be spent waiting on a traffic light to change. Something to think about. By the time you are 80 years old, you will have spent, I specifically looked this one up. I had to actually go into Google and really search for this one. By the time you're 80 years old, you will have spent 240 days sitting on the toilet. It's a long time. That's almost a year of your life, man. It's a long time. The truth is, our lives are made up of waiting. They're made of waiting. We wait at the doctor's office. We wait for someone to return our call. We wait at the airport for our flight to come in. We wait for the right person to come along. We wait uh, for the shower temperature to get just right before we step in. We're always waiting on something. We wait for the coffee to get ready to brew. Those are everyday things that we wait for. But do you realize there are other things we wait for every day to do that hold so much more significance than our shower temperature or your coffee pot? Hear me this morning. We wait to say that we are sorry. We wait to say we are sorry. We wait to call those who need to hear from us the most. We wait to make those phone calls. We wait to forgive. We wait to say I love you. Someone needs to hear me today. The coffee will brew. The flight will arrive. The doctor will see you. The light will turn green. But the opportunity to get your heart right cannot wait. Because the day and the hour in which we live testifies that our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ is soon to come. It's closer now than it's ever been before. You can't await. You cannot afford to wait to forgive or wait to say you're sorry because the condition condition of your heart determines what will happen when the trumpet does sound. And we are going to be raptured out of here. And the truth is we're not guaranteed tomorrow. If you woke up today, then you better thank the Lord above for a brand new beginning. A second chance at life, a fresh start to the mess that you made yesterday. You need to get it right today because you are not guaranteed tomorrow, my friend. What are, you, what are you waiting for? That's the question. What are we waiting for? What are we waiting for? With eternity in the balance, there is nothing in this life that is worth hanging on to. No, there's nothing worth waiting or waiting for. What can possibly be worth risking my heavenly reward? What in the world is worth that? There's no job. There's no amount of money. There's no person worth that. There's nobody worth that kind of risk. So let me ask you again, what are you waiting for? Just because you die doesn't qualify you for heaven. <laughs> yeah, I'm going to stop right there. Because a lot of people think that just because I die... I go to a better place. I deal with this because I do a lot of funerals. And I, I, I tell you, man, it just it, it's never a time to have that discussion when you're standing in a funeral parlor with somebody who's just, you know, they died so they qualify. No, they don't. Just because you die doesn't qualify you for heaven. It is the condition of your heart and your obedience to the gospel of Jesus Christ that qualifies you for that reward. So now, while we are waiting for our day or that day to come, let us make our calling and our election sure. Let us confirm our reservation on the other side while we are waiting. I don't know about you, but before I get out of here, I'm going to make sure that my heart's right with God as your pastor because I don't know what's waiting on me outside of those doors. I don't know what the day may bring, but I want to make sure that I've got my reservation stamped with the blood of Jesus on it. i got to have that name in red on my life. 
We'll never get away from waiting. Waiting on things and people and processes will always be a part of this life. But what we do during this time of waiting matters. It matters. Abraham received a promise from God, but he had to wait 25 years for Isaac, the son of promise, to be born. In the meantime, he tried to produce a promise himself with another woman named Hagar, but instead an Ishmael. She, he made an Ishmael that continues to be conf, uh, to conflict with the original promise from God unto this day in the Middle East. It's still happening. What does that mean, Pastor? It means what you do while you're waiting matters. Be patient with God's process. Joseph was favored by his father, but because of his dreams, he was betrayed by his jealous brothers into slavery where he landed himself in Egypt. And Joseph's dreams were finally realized whenever he was waiting in prison. Thirteen years in prison he waited for something to happen. He didn't know what would happen. He didn't know how it would happen. He was just in a holding pattern with God's process. And there waiting 13 years in prison, he began to serve the dreams of others and not himself. And in one day's time, he went from the prison to the palace and second in command of the greatest kingdom of his time, all because of what he did while he was waiting. What you do while you wait matters my friend humbling yourself to God's process and trusting God when you don't know how you don't know when where or what or why you trust God no matter what when you do that while you're waiting you will see God do something awesome because what you do while you wait can determine how quickly you are rescued from your present circumstance I'll say that again. What you do while you wait can determine how quickly you are rescued from your current circumstance. I don't know what you're going through today. I don't know what you got going on in your life, but I do know this. How we wait determines what God can do. Oh, God. Someone needs to know this morning that God may have you in a holding pattern like Joseph, but just because you don't feel God moving you from one thing to the next doesn't mean that you're still not in God's process. God has you just where he wants you. God's got you positioned for his plan to come together. Learn to be patient. Learn to be humble. And learn to wait upon the Lord. Lamentations chapter 3 verse 25 says the Lord is good unto them that wait for him to the soul that seeketh him. Psalms 27 and 14, wait on the Lord, be of good courage and he shall strengthen thine heart. Wait, I say, upon the Lord. Habakkuk 2 and 3 tells me, for the vision is yet for an appointed time, but at the end it shall speak and not lie. Though it tarry, wait for it, because it shall surely come, it will not tarry. There's a promise in there for somebody who's in a holding pattern right now. God's got a word, and if he said it, he will do it just because he said it. We all know this verse of Scripture, Isaiah 40 and 31. But they that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings as eagles. They shall run and not be weary. They shall walk and not faint. Somebody here this morning I feel like is waiting in a bad situation to turn around in your life. You're waiting for some crisis that you're dealing with to turn itself around. And the fact that you're dealing with it is not your fault. It's someone else's fault. Some Somebody else put this trouble in your life. I feel that. And while I was praying this morning, the, the Lord gave me this verse of scripture for you. Psalms 37 and 7. Rest in the Lord and wait patiently for him. Fret not thyself because of him who prospers in his way. Because of the man who brings wicked devices to pass. In other words, don't worry about it. Stop losing sleep over it. In other words, wait on the Lord because he's working it out. God's got this. God's got it. God's working it out. And what you need to do while you wait, it, that matters, my friend. What you do while you wait, it matters. Sometimes the Lord waits on us. 
to learn to wait on him before he carries out his plan. Isaiah 30 and 18. Therefore will the Lord wait. Therefore will the Lord wait. That he may be gracious unto you. And therefore will he be exalted. That he may have mercy upon you. For the Lord is a God of judgment. Blessed are they that wait for him. There's this balance that's happening here. He's waiting on you to learn to wait on him. It's like God's setting things in motion and then he just kind of steps back and he's going to wait and see what happens. He pushes things into our lives and allow things to happen and then he waits to see how we respond. God called the prophet Samuel to go and anoint David a little shepherd boy at that time, to anoint him the next king over Israel. But what we see is that David had to learn to wait on the Lord before he ever became king over Israel. In fact, we'll read most of the waiting on the Lord and trusting the Lord to be your strength. Where are you going to read that at? You're going to read that in the book of Psalms, the majority of which was written by that guy who did learn to wait on the Lord. And so that's what happened. He, 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 was, he learned to wait on the Lord before he ever became king over Israel. And God anointed him and then waited to see what David would do while he waited for his chance to become king. Years would pass by. And the Bible tells me that David had opportunity to take out this backslidden king, Saul, who was seeking his life. But he refrained because David recognized that the Lord had placed Saul there as king and if God put him in that position God would have to be the one to take him out and so David was not willing to raise his hand against God's anointed and because of that God gave him favor like no other king of Israel would ever have before or since then he's the most loved beloved king of all Israel David was what you do while you wait matters how you respond to circumstances while you're waiting on the Lord to answer your prayer matters matters. What are you doing today matters. You're in the house of God this morning and that matters. You may be waiting on something right now, but you're here this morning. You may be hurting right now, but you're here today and you're waiting. And what you're doing this morning by being in the house of God, that, my friend, matters. I wonder this morning, what is God waiting on us to do so that he can be for what his will could be fulfilled in our lives what is it he's waiting on us to get what lesson is he waiting on us to learn the truth is we're all waiting on something we're waiting on somebody else to take that first step we're waiting on circumstances to be just right before we act we wait Well, all the time God is waiting on us to get our head in the game. Start doing the right thing and making the right choices. When we learn to obey the Lord and wait on his will and not our own, our purpose starts to open up. I believe that whenever we begin to wait on the Lord, that's when our destiny is opened up to us. When we start to be patient with God's processes, that's when God begins to open up and reveal his plan for our lives. Young people, if you wonder what the will of God is for your life, you got to first learn to wait on him. You ain't ever going to be able to jump into the plan of God for your life if you don't first know how to wait on him. You got to learn to wait on him in prayer. You got to learn to wait on him in your lifestyle. You got to learn to wait on the Lord in every Everything that you are because he's the one. He's the driving force. He's the author of this thing, not you. How are you waiting this morning? Are you waiting on your kingdom to come? Or are you waiting on his kingdom to come? The danger is we sometimes get so busy waiting on our kingdom that we fail to see the signs of his kingdom all around us. I don't know if you know this. I'm pretty sure you do. But Jesus is coming soon. 
If, you, if you've, you've got enough distractions around you, you're going to miss it. But for those of us that are not waiting on our kingdom to come to, plas- to pass, but we're waiting on his kingdom to come to pass, we're starting to see the signs of the times. The writing is definitely on the wall, and it's been there for a while. It always makes me laugh when people finally see the writing on the wall, and I'm like, dude, that's been there for years. But we're seeing this. But the danger is that sometimes we get so busy on our kingdom's business that we forget to watch for his kingdom's business. James chapter 5, verse 7 says, Be patient, therefore, brethren, unto the coming of the Lord. Behold, the husbandman waiteth for the precious fruit of the earth and hath long patience for it until he receives the early and the latter rain. Luke chapter 21, verse 28 reminds us, And when these things begin to come to pass, look up and lift up your heads, for your redemption draweth nigh. That redemption is the coming of my of of the Lord, my friends. That, that redemption is the resurrection that is soon to come to pass. It'll be worth it all. It'll be worth it all. Luke 20 and 36. I got a lot of scripture here, man. I actually cut out a bunch of it. Neither can they die anymore, for they are equal unto the angels and are the children of God, being the children of the resurrection. Philippians 3 and 20, for our conversation is in heaven, from whence also we look for the Savior, the Lord Jesus Christ, who shall change our vile body, that it may be fashioned like unto his glorious body, according to the work whereby he is able to even subdue all things unto himself. In other words, we're going to be like him someday. We're going to have a glorified body one of these days, and we're going to see healing like we've never saw healing before. I've got to take this. Last week before last, I was talking with Sister Patty in the hospital and just, she was in such discomfort and such pain. I was thinking, oh God, help her. We prayed. We asked the Lord to do his work. We asked God for healing. And the truth is, God gave her the most ultimate form of healing. You say, well, how could that be, Pastor? True and ultimate healing can only be something that keeps you out of a doctor's office for the rest of your life and where no sickness or disease can ever have its way with you, where no pain can ever touch you, where nothing of discomfort can ever happen to you again. That, my friend, is complete healing. One of these days, I'm looking forward to being completed. And walking into perfect peace that passes my understanding. Perfect resurrection power that gives me the place where I could be with him forevermore. Luke chapter 20 verse 36. Neither can they die anymore. For they are equal unto the angels and are the children of God, being the children of the resurrection. I read that to you. For 2 Timothy chapter 4, verse 8. Henceforth there is laid up for me a crown of righteousness with the Lord. The righteous judge shall give me at that day, and not to me only, but unto all them who love his appearing. That lets me know that we got to be looking for his appearing. You ain't going to be looking for his appearing if you ain't loving his appearing. If you ain't in relationship with him, That means you don't love him. Because if you are in relationship with God, you will love God. And if you love God, you're going to be loving his appearing. The only ones who are going to see him are those who are looking for his appearing. 2 Timothy 4 and 8, they love his appearing. Titus 2 and 13, looking for that blessed hope and the glorious appearing of the great God and our Savior Jesus Christ. Hebrews 9, 28, so Christ was once offered to bear the sins of many, and unto them that look for him shall he appear the second time without sin unto salvation. A couple more verses here. 1 Peter 1 and 7, that the trial of your faith, being much more precious than of gold, that perishes, though it be tried with fire, might be found unto the praise and honor and glory at the appearing of Jesus Christ. First John 3 and 2, Beloved, 
Now are we the sons of God, and it doth not yet appear what we shall be. But we know that. That's it right there. There's one thing I do know. I don't know how it's all going to work out when I get to the other side, but I do know this. One thing we do know. When he shall appear, we shall be like him, for we shall see him as he is. I don't know about you, but I can't wait to see Jesus. There's something in me. There's an unction of the Holy Ghost that is in this place, and it's reaching for you today to grab a hold of the reality that glory is yet to come, and we are going to see Jesus soon. John chapter 11, verse 24, and throughout John 11, it tells the story of Lazarus. There's two ladies in the story. They're named Martha, Mary and Martha. It's not Mary, the mother of Jesus. It's a different Mary and her sister Martha. Mary, it's the Mary that anointed Jesus' feet, and it's Martha, the one that was always busy. You need both, if you don't know that. You know, we always want to give Mary all the credit. You know what, Mary? I understand you're super spiritual, and you're anointing Jesus' feet, and that's great. But who's going to feed the rest of these people? That's a whole Bible study. We'll do it. You got to have balance. You got to have balance, and that balance was there with Martha and Mary. But but we in the story of Lazarus. Lazarus is sick unto death, and they send word to Jesus, who is a ways away. He's two journeys away from them, and and they're like, Jesus, come quickly. Lazarus is dying. He's sick unto death, and and, and you know he's like, okay, I'll, I'll see what I could do. And so as he tarried there. He, he begins to have this conversation with the disciples, and they're, they're all kind of talking about what's going to happen with Lazarus. And, and finally, Jesus just says, you know what, don't worry about Lazarus, he's sleeping. And it's kind of funny because the disciples are like, well, if, he, if, he's, if he's sleeping, then good. Some sleep will do him, do him good. It'll help him. He's sick. He needs to be in bed. And the Bible continues on, and it tells us, the sleep he was talking about was not the sleep that we all want and we probably wish we had a little bit more of before we came to church. That's not what he's talking about. He was talking about death. And when he said to them that day that Lazarus was sleeping, he was actually telling them Lazarus is already dead. But here's the thing. And he goes and he, he, he finally shows up and it's four days that Lazarus has been buried and and he goes there and Martha is there and she's she's like Lord if you had just been here if you had just been here Jesus you would have been able to save him if you would have if you had just been here he he would have made it and he wouldn't have passed and and, and Jesus said don't worry he'll he'll rise again and and this is to Martha's credit she says these words she says to him she says I know I will see him again in the resurrection. Martha, you had it right. You will see Lazarus in the resurrection. But Jesus was just kind of, I think what Jesus was doing, he was like, you know what, Martha, just to help you out, I'm going to give you a little taste of what you're talking about. And he calls Lazarus forth out of the grave, and it's the only time in Scripture that Jesus regretted doing what he was doing. Read through that chapter and you're going to discover that Jesus was crying. He, he was upset about what it was he was about to do for Lazarus. You say, well, wh why would that be? It's because Jesus knew, Lazarus, I'm sorry. It's just so these other people can understand what this thing's all about. I'm going to have to pull you out of your perfect place of peace. Back in the world where pain will follow you. Back in the world where you're going to have trouble and you're going to have trial and you're going to have tribulation and temptation and all the things of this world will be against you. I'm sorry, Lazarus. Lazarus, come forth. Martha believed in the resurrection of her brother Lazarus on that last day. Just not as soon as Jesus, not as soon as what Jesus would illustrate before her. Jesus was like, Martha, you believe in the resurrection? Let me give you a little taste of what that looks like. And Jesus wakes him from the dead. And he says those words that it was like he was asleep. There are many believers that ascribe to the idea that when you die, you go immediately to heaven. I may be stepping on somebody's toes here, but you know what? Talk to me later. There isn't really any real scripture evidence for that. 
Most scriptures suggest that we are sleeping in death, waiting for the coming of the Lord, waiting on the day, that great day where the trumpet will sound. We're waiting. It doesn't make much sense to go to heaven and then the Lord returns to earth again to take you to heaven. It doesn't make much sense for the Lord to come back for you when you're already there. The scripture says that the dead in Christ shall rise first. And then they that are followed by us, which are those who are alive and remain, we will be the ones that then will be caught up to meet him in the air. John chapter 5, verse 24, and I'm, I'm done. Look, eleven fourteen. Verily, verily, John chapter 5, verse 24. Verily, verily, I say unto you that he that heareth my word and believeth on him that sent me hath everlasting life and shall not come into condemnation, but is passed from death unto life. Verily, verily, I say unto you, the hour is coming and now is when the dead shall hear the voice of the Son of God, and they that hear shall live. For as the Father hath life in himself, so hath he given to the Son to have life in himself, and hath given him authority to execute judgment also, because he is the Son of Man. Marvel not at this, for the hour is coming in which all that are in the graves shall hear his voice, and shall come forth. They that have not done good unto the re- they that have done good into the resurrection of life, and they that have done evil into the resurrection of damnation. What is that saying? It says there's going to be a resurrection of some kind in your life. It's either going to be a resurrection of life or it's going to be a resurrection of damnation. And what we do while we wait for that day to come matters. I've put many loved ones in the ground who are now sleeping, waiting on that blessed resurrection day. They wait. But while they wait, what will we do? While they're waiting, what are we doing? What's happening now while they wait? Lawrence LaRue, the founding pastor of this church who built this structure around you, he's in his grave, waiting Lawrence the Rue, while you wait, there's still a church happening at 2197 Six Mile Lane in Moberly, Missouri. Dorothy Snyder, there's still people here that remember you and the things that you taught us while you were here pastoring this church. Vernon McGarvey, while you wait, there's still, there's still a person here who is walking in your legacy. There's a young man that was 11 years old when you showed up here who's now pastoring. You didn't get to see it, but while you sleep, it's happening all around you. Vernon McGarvey, while you wait, Ed Bennington's still here. He's still here. (laughs) Pastor McGarvey, while you wait, there's many faces in this room that you've taught Bible studies to. Pastor McGarvey, while you wait, your family's still here in Moberly, Missouri. Just thought you should know that while you're waiting. Well, Clyde, Clyde Woods, while you wait, your wife is in church this morning with her grandchildren and her children this morning. Oh, God, help us. Rachel Husky, while you wait. Oh, you're, there's faithfulness that's still in your, in your household that is still here today. While you wait, think about it. All of us, Patty Dodd, while you wait. While you wait, your family's in church the next Sunday after your death. While you wait, what are we going to do while they wait? Those around us who are waiting for the redemption, what will we do with the time that you and I have here today? What shall we do while they wait on the redemption and the resurrection of God? What are we going to do? What are you waiting for? 
while we're waiting, while they're waiting, what are we doing? Let's stand together, if you will. Oh, God, help us. While they wait. We are here. While they're waiting, we're still here. We can still do something about where we are. We can still do something about where we are today. While they're waiting for the adoption. While they're waiting for the resurrection. While they're waiting in perfect peace and sleep. They're waiting. What are you doing while they're waiting? We've all laid loved ones to rest. We've all got those people in our lives that have impacted us, and they are now in that place of perfect peace and rest, and they're waiting. The question is, what are we waiting for? The Bible says in John chapter 5 that there was a lame man who was waiting on the moving of the water at the pool of Bethesda, waiting for the water to be troubled by the angel of God so that he could step in and be healed. He wasn't the only one there that day. But while he waited, Jesus came by. While he was waiting on the water to move, while he waited, the answer started to speak to him. It was Jesus, and all Jesus said was, take up thy bed and walk. Take up thy bed and walk. I feel like Jesus has walked up into this place this morning, and he has spoken to someone, and now... What you have been waiting for is now waiting on you to take up your bed and walk. Jesus is waiting on you to take action. Jesus is speaking to your heart this morning. Jesus is speaking to you. He's been speaking to you all this time here today. Maybe he's been speaking to you for a while before you even came here today. God's already been working on you. His voice has been there. He's calling you to take action. The question is, what are you waiting for? Everything you need is already in place. This, is a, this altar is open for whosoever will. This place is a place of prayer. This is the safest place that you can be right here at this altar. Are we going to wait to make that decision? Or are we going to wait to make, take that action? Or are we going to wait because it's a habit of ours as humans to wait? Are we going to take action? While those that have loved us and those that have gone before us have, they they have entered into their, their, their reward and they're there waiting. And while they wait, I take action this morning. While they wait, I'm going to do my part. While they wait, I'm going to reach for the Lord one more time. While they wait, I'm going to make my calling and my election sure. While they wait, I'm going to do whatever I can to make sure that I'm right with God. While they wait. Come on, somebody, why don't you reach out to the Lord in prayer. Reach out to Him this morning. Just communicate to the Lord right now where you are. Whatever it is that's going on in your life, you need to know that what you do while you wait, it matters. It holds consequence. It holds weight in glory. God, help us to, to, to wait on you, to renew our strength as we wait. Hallelujah, Jesus. Take your time with this. We're in no hurry here this morning. We got plenty of time.